Hey everyone, this is Nick from NXT Plants, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I mix up my nutrient solution. The first step when I'm making my nutrient solution is putting the monosilicic acid from this brand into water to get it dissolving, and that has to be done for 30 minutes prior to mixing up the nutrient solution. The rate at which I mix it is a quarter teaspoon per two gallons. One of the aspects of using silica is it actually raises the pH of the water. Monosilicic acid does it a little bit less, but you still need to then pH adjust. So just keep that in mind if you're someone who doesn't routinely test the pH, this sort of product will mess with your pH. Now the advantages of using this product are it's an essential nutrient just like pretty much for the plants. They need it. Plants grown in soil can actually get it from the dirt around them, but if you're growing in hydroponics it can be a very important thing to dose. The important aspects of silica are for cell wall integrity and making sure that they can actually inflate to their full size. When your plant is silica deficient one of the things you might notice are sort of misshapen leaves. They can come in looking a little bit warped I'll insert a picture of one of the plants that I identified a silica deficiency in. It was my king of spades back in the day before I started adding this to my nutrient solution. So it could be a good indicator of a deficiency in your feed. Not all plants have the exact same nutrient requirements. Some are a little bit more sensitive to things being absent, so it can be useful for diagnosing needs in your solution. Another good aspect of silica is it makes the plant more resilient to environmental pressure. So think low humidity, too hot, those sort of things. After I add my silica to the water, let it sit for 30 minutes, then add it to the big jug. I, you then have to use pH down to adjust it to a neutral pH of seven. So to pH adjust, I first take some of my filtered water, add it to this Tupperware. So for the five gallon jug, I'm gonna use 0.75 mils of the pH down. I know that because I've done this a few times and measured it. The cat has decided to join. She wants the plastic bits. So then I'm gonna add this to the five gallon, oh, oopsies. And add it to the five gallon jug. Okay, get off, get off, off. Shoo. No chemicals for the beach. After you pH adjust it back to a seven, I then add CalMag. That's what this big jug is. CalMag is really another essential part of your nutrient solution. And Therium especially tend to be pretty heavy magnesium feeders. Magnesium is also essential for the uptake of nitrogen. So you can notice a magnesium deficiency if your leaves are looking a little bit, not mosaic-y, but when they have that uh, sort of bleached appearance, but they are in lower light. You can sort of see, it's not quite chlorosis, but you'll notice it's not fully saturated, especially if you compare it to the part of the tissue closer to the veins. Now that I've adjusted the solution back to a neutral pH, I'm good to begin adding the CalMag. The way I do this is I keep a bag of these syringes with each of them labeled for what ingredient it is. And I'm gonna put 25 mils or five mils per gallon of this product, which is the standard dosage that the company recommends. Then I add this to the jug. After adding CalMag, I'm then gonna add the sort of core three-part nutrient solution. This is complete, so it has the micros, all the macros, and then it also has the specific component for the bloom. That just means it's a little bit higher in the nutrients needed for flowering. I use all three all the time. I've been doing this for like years now, I guess. And the big thing is to make sure you flush, especially if you're noticing signs of salt buildup. That can be seen in a variety of ways, but flushing is an important part if you're gonna be using any sort of high feed. I mean, even when you're not, fertilizers build up, plants don't always necessarily consume all the salts in the same ratios or the ratios that are being provided by the fertilizer. That being said, I do have plants that I've now kept for several years without a flush, just as an experiment to see if anything happens. And so far, no signs of nutrient lockout. I'm mainly doing that just to test. I wouldn't recommend anyone not flush, and I do flush the plants that I care about outside of the ones I'm running this experiment on. These three all dose at the same rate, which is five mils per gallon. And again, I, like I said before, I'm following the directed ratio on the bottle. And a big thing when you're doing these three parts is to keep them separate. So I'm gonna take the five mils per gallon dose in the syringe, add it to some water, and then put it into the jug. And then I'm gonna do the same with the other two parts. 
making sure to never mix the concentrates because that can cause the nutrients to precipitate out. The cat is being crazy and she keeps reaching her paws up trying to pull down things off the table. Unfortunately, it's just out of frame. Then I add the diluted but still concentrated. I'm gonna repeat that step now with the grow. Again, the five mils per gallon as the manufacturer directs. And now on to the bloom, which is the last of the three core parts. And I'm gonna be doing again that same 25 mils for the five gallons or five mils per gallon. Then of this, I'm gonna add five mils per gallon. This is the humic and fulvic acids or a diamond nectar. I switched to using the scoops because this bottle is almost empty. So it's pretty hard to get down there. The reason you add this is it helps increase the nutrient uptake of your plants. It's also good for the substrate microbiome and it helps keep the myco and beneficial bacteria happy. And then this is a quarter teaspoon per gallon of the Super Thrive. I like adding this because it's a kelp product. So it's got a lot of good vitamins, um, some of the essential nutrients. It has good levels of iron and sulfur. It also has hormones that aid in root development and sort of root branching. It smells stinky. There's no real risk with overdoing it on that. It's just expensive. <laughs> okay, and then I'm adding the myco because these guys have no uh, issues being mixed together. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of the orca per two gallons. And this has the beneficial bacteria and fungus. The orca product is a liquid, which is really nice because it lets me use it continuously. And it actually costs me less than buying the physical product and using that only every once in a while. This is the same, I think, as the regular Great White. It's just a liquid form, so it's really easy to add to the nutrient solution. And another reason I like this product is back when I used Dino Myco, is I had to do the Myco and then I had to do a bacteria product, whereas this one is both of them together. Okay, I've now added all of the pieces to the nutrient solution. The last product I'm gonna add is Vitamax Pro. It's another kelp product, but it is also derived from molasses. And again, this just has good all around vitamins and nutrients, and it fills in some of the blanks, and again, a source of hormones. This is dosed at four mils per gallon. I'm gonna add 20 mils. This stuff does actually smell like molasses. Now I'm gonna give the jug a mix with this steak. <laughs> you can see any particulate floating. That is just the myco and bacteria creating a little uh, scoby. Now what I've gotta do is take the solution out, measure its pH, and then pH adjust it down. To get it out, I use this little battery powered pump thing. I think I'm gonna upgrade to something with a higher flow rate. It's pretty slow, but it is okay for filling something like a watering can. I adjust the pH of my solution down to, I try to keep it under five, but pretty close to five. So something like a 4.8, 4.9 is sort of my desired range. The reason I do this is these plants come from a natural environment with a very acidic soil. The pH of their soil where they come from is actually lower than what I described. It's not the case for all of them, but a lot of them, and they all come from a very acidic soil. Another benefit of the lower pH is it actually wards off root rot. The root rot bacteria doesn't really survive below pHs of five. I'm not gonna say that you won't get any rot if your pH is adjusted low, I'm just saying it's a way of reducing your risk. Okay, and just in case that was bad in the line, I'm gonna pour back that initial. The way I measure pH is one of these pH probes. I got it off Amazon. I'm gonna measure, gotta leave it in here for a little bit. Give it a little bit of a mix around. So my solution's reading a 5.05. So it's a little bit higher than I'd like, so I might add one drop or something of pH down. And when I say one drop, I mean literally one drop. This stuff is scary acidic, so be really careful. You should make sure you're wearing eyewear, gloves, all of that. And if it gets on your floor, your counters or anything, it will burn and eat it. It's a pretty strong acid. So when I do this, I normally make sure it's above something like a plastic tarp. And don't add it straight to your solution, add it 
to something because I literally am adding one drop. No exaggeration. Okay, gotta mix it again. I'm gonna once again drain the line. Make sure I don't measure the solution before it has the other pH down in it. I'm gonna give it another measure. Yeah, I'm already reading a 4.89, so we're where I wanna be. It looks like it's gonna hold around a 4.8, 4.85, which I'm pretty happy with. Okay, next solution I'm gonna be mixing up is the stuff I use for seedlings and sort of props. So this is gonna be a little bit lighter on the fertilizer. One of the advantages of GrowTech is they sell this great product, which essentially just is very dilute version of their nutrient solution and it even has CalMag already mixed into it. So I like to use this at its recommended strength uh, as the quote unquote like fertilizer for my seedling and prop boxes. So I'm gonna take my syringe and this guy is dosed at the recommended dose, which is five mils per gallon. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this at the recommended dose, which is five mils per gallon. I mix, I guess I should add before I get too much deeper into this, I water my seedlings from one of these pressurized sprayer bottles. I would not recommend the Home Depot brand. Do not get the Home Depot brand, it's terrible. If you're gonna be doing this sort of mixed stuff, I'd recommend getting one with a pre-filter. It can develop sort of clumps and it is absolutely killer to the sort of cheaper ones that don't have any sort of filtering mechanism before it comes at the spray tip. The spray tip gets clogged and even when you clean it out a bunch, it, it, it's, it's just terrible. The next thing I add to my seedling solution is the diamond nectar for the humic and fulvic acids. Like I said before, it's beneficial for the soil environment. It helps feed the mycobacteria, and bacteria and it helps the plants uptake nutrients faster. So I'm gonna be adding 10 mils of this. While I'm here with this water, I think I'm also gonna add the Super Thrive. And for the Super Thrive, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon for the two gallons. And like I mentioned in the other one, the Super Thrive is good for the hormones and essential vitamins and nutrients it adds. When I'm talking about the hormones, I'm especially looking for ones that cause the roots to sort of grow and divide. That's an important for building these really dense root systems. And then I'm gonna add the Orca. And then I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon to, for the two gallons. Another benefit about this is it comes out to the pH uh, I want, so I don't have to do any pH adjustment to it. And that's how I make my seedling and cutting solution. Thank you everyone for watching. If you could give me a like or a subscribe, that's great. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I do my best to answer every comment. And if you want daily content, I upload under the same handle on Instagram. So at NXC Plants. Have a good one.